Hey, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So we've got lots of topics today. We're going to talk about Ukraine's F-16 fighters. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, it's going to take time to train those people. There's going to be about, let's see, 40, 50, 60 or so uh, jets uh, to begin with and dozens of pilots and do dozens of people to fix the mechanics and, and engineers and technicians and officials to tell them how to fly around. So it's a lot of going into, it's not just deliver the planes and boom, they're gone. Then uh, Russia, okay, their Lunar 25 hit the moon smashed into the moon. They were in a race with India, whose vi his vehicle is called the Chandrayaan Chandrayaan three, I think it is, and it's scheduled to land uh, a soft landing on August twenty third. So they're the only one left in the game. And Chandrayaan actually means literally moon craft. And I'm reading something here that tells me all this. I don't I don't remember all this stuff. Then the fires, the Spain's Tenefri, uh, are they deliberately set? Those Canary Island fires uh, attributed to drought. And uh, there's eight to 10,000 expected to eventually be evacuated. 8,000 now could be 10,000 or more. And then in the Maui Lahaina, a power line. Was it a power line that did that? So is the electric company to blame? Is it the wind from the hurricane that knocked the power line? It's really nobody's fault. Uh, was it lightning? The Hurricane Hillary with uh, all those winds. And there's over 100 people that have been found or identified as passed away now. It could be a thousand or more. So uh, that's what we're gonna talk about and I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. So a lot, a lot to talk about today. I'm gonna use this cool uh, uh, mystical medleys uh, kind of cartoonish tarot deck just because it's such heavy subjects that uh, I like to lighten the mood a little bit. And so this is that cartoonish Baphomet, which is a devil uh, uh, kind of a character. And these are those cool cards. And I'll show you all about these cards at the end of the video. Uh, but while I'm unpacking them, I can't help but uh, try to give you a peek at what's inside here. I think that one has to be like that to be shown to you. I hope you're seeing it. And then, um, so there we go. So if you like these cards, like I said, I talk about them at the end of the video, and I think they're kind of cool. Um, just, uh, there you go. So, we're gonna talk about all those subjects. So Ukraine, I think we're gonna do a bunch of short card pulls uh, for to get everything in and not make this a really, really long video. Um, but uh, the Ukraine and those F-16, Denmark's gonna give them a bunch. Um, it's gonna take uh, a long time to train everybody. Then Russia, their craft hit the moon, India's uh, Chandrayaan actually translates to moon craft, literally. So that's going to, it's scheduled to do a soft landing. Looks like they might get it done. And then the, the spires in, in Spain's Canary Island of Tenerife, and, um, and was it set and uh, what's going on? There's so many evacuated. And then in Maui Lahaina, power line or lightning and the Hillary winds and all those people did. So we're just going to see what the cards can tell us about all of that. I mean, why wouldn't we? So uh, that's what the reading will be about. But First, before we do any of that, let's have just a moment of meditation. Okay. So here we go. So the Ukraine. Um, this could be the thing that turns everything around. So delivering the, the jets, I mean, there are already some of them ready to go. Not many, but some. And um, so Denmark says they've got 19 altogether. That they could, they're, they're old jets that they don't want anymore. They're getting new jets. But this is like gold to Ukraine. So 19 from Denmark, and they're, they're going to deliver six now, whatever now means. Um, eight in 2024, and then another five in 2025. Now the Netherlands has 42 of those F-16s. Now remember, you know, you knock out a few F-16s out of the air and you start eating up your planes pretty quick. So the Netherlands has 42. Don't know when those are going to go. Maybe some of them, by the time this video goes out, have sent this. a few of them may have been sent over. But the problem is they don't have anybody to fly them. They don't have technicians to fix them on the ground. And they don't have officials who know how to deploy them. 
Okay, so uh, it can take six months to train the techs and the engineers. It can take, uh, there's 70 or so Ukrainian officials who are in Denmark and Romania right now uh, getting leadership training, I, was, I presume. And then the pilots, they say they're, they're going to have several dozen. Well, what are several dozen pilots? Is that, is that tw it's more than 12, a couple dozen would be two, a few dozen would be three. Uh, so several has to be four dozen or more. That would be uh, 48, 72, 84, 96 pilots, which isn't that many pilots, honestly. Then, um, so we'll just stop on that, and then we'll talk about the other ones as we come up to do the drawing. But right now, it's just about those Ukrainian uh, planes. Let's do um, three cards real quick to see if these planes are going to be what makes the difference. And then we'll ask one more question that I've got in my head right now. So three cards. Are these um, F-16s what's going to make the difference in Ukraine winning the war? Okay, that's presuming that Ukraine wins the war. First card up is the Eight of Wands. Okay, this is very interesting. Wands, and I love it, these, these determined witches are all headed off together. You know, wands are actions, plans, forward movement. I can think of them as missiles, as planes, okay? These witches are flying those planes. Um, as a matter of fact, the direction these witches are headed in would be the direction from Ukraine towards Russia, uh, if my memory serves me. And then, um, and there's eight here. So the, the first card up about this question about those F-16, if they're going to make a difference, this looks, uh, usually when you get the aid of wands, there's a lot of stuff coming at you, and so you need to be ready. So that's a warning to Russia. The next thing up here is this Five of Swords. Five of Swords is um, uh, an abuse of power. Okay, so and the Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law. And this looks to me almost like Goliath against, uh, uh, David against Goliath here. And it looks like Goliath has been the one who's, who's tossing away this truth, justice, rules, and law. And David has got his sling over his shoulder ready to shoot it up. And um, so this sounds interesting. Are the F-16s going to make the difference? And then the final one is a great big page of pentacles. Yeah, this guy's looking very smug. Pentacles are value. It can be money, but, you know, it's value here. So these F-16s are going to make a difference. Yeah, you've got a lot going on. It's uh, David against Goliath, uh, Russia being in Ukraine. And um, and this is a great big offer of value. So, yeah, they're going to make a difference. Um, is this going to be... Uh, is this going to be what... what makes Ukraine win the war. Is Ukraine going to win the war and is Russia going to have to back away? Is that what we want to know? Four cards. Okay. One, two, three, and four. Is Ukraine going to win the war you know, because of these, of these planes and is Russia going to have to give up? First card. Five of Pentacles being left out in the cold being left out in the cold. And I'm asking about Ukraine. Ukraine left out in the cold. Next one up. Six of Cups. Remembering the way things were emotionally. Value. Emotion. Queen of Cups. A great big offer. Uh, compassion. Feminine energy. And did I do enough? And it makes me feel like no, enough wasn't done. I'm not sure that this is what's going to help Ukraine win that war. So I said, is Ukraine going to win the war? And the first thing we get up is being left out in the cold. Okay. Next we get here, the Six of Cups, remembering how things were in the past. That's usually, you know, sad. Uh, Queen of Cups is a great big offer of compassion uh, somehow. So you would think this has to get offered to Ukraine, not to Russia. And uh, worrying that you hadn't done enough. And um, so I think, it's, I, I think it's a good possibility that Ukraine doesn't win. Or they could just be telling not the complete story, but I did ask for the complete end. Not what I wanted to hear. So now let's talk about uh, Russia's Luna 25 hitting the moon. Since we're talking about Russia, now let's switch over to Russia's Luna 25. Russia's spacecraft, the Luna 25, has hit the moon. And we want to uh, link this with India's uh, Chandrayaan, Chandrayaan, which means Mooncraft 3, Chandrayaan 3, uh, which is scheduled for a soft landing 
same place that the Russia ship, the same area, uh, crashed. Uh, this will be on August 23rd. It was a race between India and Russia to get these unmanned spacecraft down there to collect data and in this unknown or unexplored part of the moon, I presume. So uh, Russia's Luna 25 hit the moon. What can three cards tell us about that? And then we'll do three cards on the India craft. Russia's uh, Luna 25, three cards. One, two, three. Russia's Luna 25. First card. A high Priestess. This is a prosperous card, okay? Um, this is a card with, with a lot of authority and a lot of hope. Um, the Knight of Pentacles. This is the fire for the value. The Five of Pentacles being left out in the cold. Well, I think this is just telling the story of that craft. So the High Priestess, I guess we'd have to think of this as Mother Russia. And uh, she was fighting uh, for that uh, value of getting to explore that piece of the moon. And, but now she's left out in the cold. So it's just a very flat uh, reading. Um, let's draw one more card. I'm going to shuffle because I want to ask, is Russia going to uh, get any use out of this crash? Is this going to be beneficial at all for Russia, this, this craft having crashed? One card. Yeah, yeah. There's some kind of partnership that's going to make this uh, beneficial. So I wonder if it's going to be a sharing of technology because they maybe they got so much done. I don't know, but it's going to be so, they were, they're going to dredge something up from this to make it uh, some it won't be complete loss. Interesting. But you know, I guess that's what scientists would do anyway. They would make sure that they um, that the experiment is going to have uh, good uh, gains along the way, uh, regardless of where it might fail. You always anticipate that it's going to fail. Now the India. Uh, Chandrayaan, yeah, at least you know one of the weakest links in your situation, and certainly landings and takeoffs for aircraft are always the most dangerous parts. Uh, Chandrayaan 3, Chandrayaan 3, three cards, three, three cards. Let's see what this, uh, the story they can tell us about that, because we're anticipating this one landing, so we're thinking uh, that probably it's going to be uh, successful, right? That's what you would think. First card, Justice, I like that. Second card, Four of Swords, okay. Patience, being careful before you take a move, and then truth, justice, rules, and law, and the fool, a new journey. Okay, so this is good. So um, yeah, it will, it will, there will be some, some justice here that India uh, makes the landing um, because of the caution, and then they get to start that new journey of exploration. So the India landing is going to be good, and Russia uh, will get something out of this crash. Uh, but anyone would have anyway. Now the fires in Spain and uh, Maui. So Spain, those fires are on, on the Canary Island of Tenerife. I guess I'm pronouncing that right. And um, Tenerife. Tenerife or Tenerife? Huh. Anyway, uh, there seems to be some thought that maybe they were set deliberately. So I'm just going to flat out ask the cards, were those fires in Spain set deliberately? One, two, Three. Were those fires in Spain? Eight, uh, eight to ten thousand people evacuated. I don't know if anybody's died. Ace of Swords. Truth, justice, rules, and law is sweating it out. Empress. Looks surprised and shocked. And the Ten of Cups is happy family. So was it set deliberately? This really. I'm going to say no. It wasn't set deliberately. I'm going to say it might have been an innocent accident. So I would say it was human set accidentally and someone's not owning up to it. And maybe, they, maybe they're not going to. So the Ace of Swords, Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules and Law. The Ace is a great big offer of that, you know, that technology, that, that situation. But look, this Ace is really sweating and having a hard time. And the Empress is very shocked in this instance. So this is almost like Mother Nature is going, what, what happened? Okay, so it was a surprise. And then the Ten of Cups, Happy Family, is that you know it's something that happens sometimes even in our our personal lives we do something that causes an upset for someone else in our own little personal family it wasn't intentional and sometimes we don't always own up to it and who's to say that's not for the better okay then uh, the Mary Lahaina power line or lightning um, thousand people Will it get to a thousand people dead? 
or near that anyway. Three cards. One, two, three. I'm going to ask another question with these same cards. Will it get to a thousand people dead? Eight of Wands, Six of Pentacles, and the Emperor. Okay, so the Eight of Wands just tells us there's a lot of action going on there, okay? But eight, okay? Um, the Six of Pentacles is doling out the value. So I think this, uh, because we're asking specifically about how many people um, died. And so it's going to balance out at some point. And the Emperor is um, in charge. He's telling us, you know, this is what's happening. So they're going to get to the bottom of it. And these are very reminiscent of, of a king, a Hawaiian king, actually, to me. So I think, mm, no, this isn't talking about a thousand people. Um, this is talking about the Eight of Wands. So at the most, I would say 800, but I don't even think it's going to be that. But we say the Six of Pentacles. This is telling me that at this six point, it's going to start to balance out. So there could be, be up to 600. And then, uh, but they're going to get to the bottom of it. They're going to investigate that thoroughly. Hawaii is on the job. And now I want to know, was it a uh, power line or lightning? Let's ask two cards for each. Power line? Was it a power line? Was it a power line? Page of Cups. So it was a surprise. And the King of Wands. So the Page of Cups is weak in the Royal Court. Cups are emotional. And this is a surprise. So it was a surprise. And power line or lightning, that either one would be a surprise. And then the King of Wands, this is a guy who's calling the shots, the actions. So power line, this is this is human in charge, power line. It was a surprise, it was an accident. What about lightning? One, two. Seven of Cups, that's illusion and delusion. And um, happy squirrel. So this is a bonus card that's in this pack. And when you get happy squirrel, it's just you can interpret it in a in a positive way. So yeah, this is not this was not uh, lightning, uh, illusion, illusion for lightning and happy squirrel. You know, we don't have to worry about that. No, it was the um, power line. That's sad. So that's everything I've got today. Hope you enjoyed that reading. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Okay, so this is a very interesting uh, deck that I have now called Mystical medleys a vintage cartoon tarot this is such a cool deck and i've had it for a little while uh, I, mean, I mean it's absolutely new but i've had it for maybe a couple three weeks practicing with it and uh, the box is amazing it's a good sturdy box you'd expect uh, you got a nice uh, perfume uh, perhaps in a box like this and this uh, is artwork by gary hall and uh, this is uh, published i presume or distributed at least by sterling ethos out of new york okay very interesting minute what happens is this box opens from the bottom okay so you flip this open and then you have this uh creature right here which i forgot the name but i'll see it in a minute because i'm gonna look at the guidebook and tell you about it and then bring up the example of it on my phone but uh so this is how you open the box from the bottom that opens down this slides out and then now what you have is this inner uh, case with a very faint kind of watermark of this uh, animal on the front if you look inside the case, and I hope you can see it, uh, inside there is a little uh, star, which for me is temperance, okay? Or it could be the star card itself. It's got two cups, a cup in each hand, which is typical of the star card, finding that balance. And uh, so that's, I love it when they've gone to the trouble to include some little secret uh, treasure for you inside the box. Now, inside here, if you take these cards out, inside this box, we have the sun, okay? So the sun card, I hope you can see that too. Okay, and there's a little watermark on this side. There's none on the other side, and I'll show you why that's important. And the other thing that comes with this card, or uh, this deck, are two extra cards, Sad Squirrel and Happy Squirrel for divination. And the guidebook tells you how you would divine those, and uh, that brings us to uh, the guidebook. So again, this little creature is a very beautifully done kind of book. And um, so if you gave this as a gift, or if you were getting it as a gift, you'd feel very uh, glad uh, that you got it. And it has a nice introduction here, which is speaking to um, Gary's um, um, inspirations uh, to coming uh, into this. Uh, uh, and it starts out, like so many good stories, it all started with the devil. And that's what that uh, uh, animal uh, signifies here. Um, 
I've always been fascinated by magic, the cult, and the imagery of the tarot. I own several decks from the fully usable traditional ones to more modernistic, uh, modern artistic ones, and have always dreamed of creating my own in some way. Now, I want to find the name of this little devil here, and uh, so it's going to take me just a minute to read through this, uh, because, gosh, I can't remember Baphomet. Okay, so the creature that we're looking at, then, is uh, the Baphomet. That's what this guy is. So if you put these together right here, you see that is the cartoonish uh, depiction of a Baphomet. And let me show you what a Baphomet is. Let's say define uh, Baphomet. And we'll get a picture here. So this is the Baphomet. And this is a, a deity that supposedly the, um, the Knights of the Templar would have... Um, I don't want to say worshipped, but as it had an occultic interest in. And so the first card that Gary Hall created was that uh, Baphomet. And then from that, the rest sprung. So let's see. How am I going to do the rest of this? Yeah. Um, now, the cards themselves are a good way. They're uh, easy to use. They fit well in your hand. But the fantastic thing is how beautiful these cards are. This artist, Gary Hall, has a kind of ropey uh, quality to his art. It's kind of a, uh, a rubber hose kind of a, an effect if you look at like the arms. And, uh, and so that's his uh, style. And, um, and so the cards are very interesting. It took a little bit of uh, studying them before I felt comfortable using them for divination. Okay, there's no reason because they do pretty easily, uh, they're pretty recognizable as the Rider Waite system, but still, for whatever reason, maybe I was just so distracted by the artwork. Um, I spread the cards out like this so that uh, if you don't get to see a lot of cards, then at least you've seen them here, and uh, you can decide uh, if these are cards that you like and would like to use. I was always curious to see more than just a few cards that a reader would uh, pull out during the presentation. So there we go. Well, coming back tomorrow, I'll be doing it all again, so ciao for now.